Eagles, they've got to do something in the interior because of the Kelsey retirement. I think Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon is a good fit there. They've been active in free agency. They have to replace DeAndre Swift. They did that with Saquon Barkley. They brought in, uh, what, uh, Bryce Huff from the Jets. Corner could be a need here, but they need to replace the heart of that offensive line. You've got, you've got your quarterback in place. You've got Saquon Barkley. You need someone on the interior because you just lost Kelsey. So I think Jackson Powers Johnson right there fits. He's an interior center uh, from Oregon. And now you get to that charger spot because remember the Vikings who had the 23rd and the 11th, they moved up to fifth. So then the Vikings take JJ McCarthy and now the, the chargers are able to drop back to 11. They take Dr Brock Bowers. Now they're sitting there at 23 and guess what they can do. They can go offensive line, which is exactly what Jim Harbaugh wants to do more tight ends, more linemen, extra gaps, get tough, run the football, help your quarterback be the best version of himself and play winning football. And guess what? It's worked everywhere that he's been. So why would it change? So now the Chargers can go from the fifth pick to the 11th, take Brock Bowers, best tight end in the draft, and get the 23rd pick from the Vikings and take an offensive lineman. I like Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. They can pair Guyton at right tackle to go with their left tackle, Rashawn Slater. Um, if they came out of this draft, just close your eyes for a moment, not if you're driving, full disclosure. If the if the Char Chargers came out of this draft, Harbaugh's first, and they got Brock Bowers and a right tackle, let's say it's Tyler Guyton, everyone would be like, oh, yeah, that's a great draft for them. Well, of course. Well, of course. That's why I love it, and that's why we did it. All right, 24 is the Cowboys. Cowboys drafted Tyler Smith in the first round in 22 as a left guard but he played almost the entire rookie season at left tackle because of Tyron Smith. Smith was injured, missed most of the year. So when Tyron was healthy, he went to guard. Troy Fontenot from Washington, he is a left tackle, or I think he could play left guard. So now all of a sudden you're solidifying that left side of the offensive line. This allows some flexibility. So while it's not like the, the sexiest pick in the world, Troy Fontenot from Washington is a really good player. He can play on the left side of the line of scrimmage, tackle or guard. And now the Cowboys continue to solidify an area where they need to be solidified, in, in particular after losing uh, Smith in the offseason. Now at 25. All right, so remember earlier I mentioned that, hey, you know, what if the Bengals wanted to select and jump back in. Okay, hear me out. I've got two arguments here for the 25th pick going back to the Bengals. What if the Packers are looking at this and they think to themselves, okay, we've got this really young offense that is showing some promise. It is, right? I thought the Packers played pretty well. And yet, if you could just add like that veteran piece, guy that's been there, you know, someone that's that's a little bit more of a known commodity. Imagine the Packers saying, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and trade away 25 and let's get T. Higgins. So now all of a sudden, this young offense has a legitimate, more known commodity in the skill position. And now the Bengals would be there at 25, and then they would take one of the remaining offensive linemen. You could do that. Now, one might also think to yourself, Joel, that's crazy. One, the Packers don't pay wide receivers or else Devontae Adams would be there. They don't care to use assets. This would basically be saying my our first rounder is a wide receiver and T Higgins. They don't do that. They didn't draft Aaron Rodgers a first round wide receiver. So in one part of my, I was like, you know what? That would be interesting. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not going to do it. So I didn't pull the trigger. I just wanted to plant that seed and just say at some point in here, whether it's Cowboys at 24, Packers at 25, Bucks at 26, maybe even the Cardinals, Bills, like there's a chance that one of these teams is sitting there and they're thinking to themselves like, hey, T. Higgins might be really good for us. 
And that's where the Bengals could jump up and maybe they could get Troy Fon new. You know, maybe they could get one of these offenses. Maybe Guyton is still on the board for them. So just planting that seed. But I stuck with it. Packers are selecting right here at 25. Um, how about Nate Wiggins? Corner from Clemson. He was fast at the combine. 4-2-8 in the 40. He's 6-1. I like that selection right there with the Packers. They always take good football players. I feel like they make sound decisions. I, I think Nate, Nate, Nate Wiggins could be that. Bucks at 26. They traded Carlton Davis to the Lions, so they need help on the outside of their defense. I like Enos Rakestraw from Missouri. He can help that pass defense. They were 29th in the league last year. And you look up and it's like, you got to you got to face San Francisco. You know, you, you've you got to face some of these teams that are going to be threats throwing the football. So for the Bucs, I think Enos Rakestraw could, could make a lot of sense. Now the Cardinals are back up. So this is their second selection in the first round. And I'm looking up and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, Chop Robinson is available here. So they could come out of this draft with a dynamic pass rusher in Chop Robinson and a generational wide receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. Sign me up. Chop Robinson is really, really good. Now, he happens to be one of those players I was referencing earlier where his production numbers on the field don't quite match up with the athleticism that you're seeing in the testing environment. And that's true. And I think it'll show up. I really do. I, I can tell you this. Not many guys are going to be able to cover him, block him on the speed rush. His first step is lightning quick. The reason that Michigan ran 32 straight times against Penn State is Chop Robinson. And it wasn't because he was bad at run defense. It's because they weren't going to block him. It wasn't because they were trying to avoid J.J. McCarthy throwing the football. It was that they were trying to avoid blocking Chop Robinson. Just go watch the first two series of that game and you realize real quick, oh yeah, Chop Robinson is going to have as many sacks as Michigan allows him to have. And so guess what they did? Ran the football 32 straight times. That's how good Chop Robinson is. At 28, the Bills are up. Bills lost some guys in the secondary due to that cap situation. So Tredavious White, Jordan, uh, Jordan Poyer, those guys are gone. How about Cooper DeJean? I like Cooper DeJean's game. He's versatile. The guy is a ball hawk. I think he could fit with the Bills. Um, DeGene is a Swiss army knife type of player. So if you're losing a lot of pieces out of that secondary, he can fit in any number of ways. Um, and I get it. He's coming off of that broken leg into this season, but he's been cleared to resume football activities. And quite frankly, when, for me, this is one of those injuries that I'm just not worried about once you're given a clean bill of health. It's not something that's going to nag and, and lag for him over the next couple of months or years. So Cooper DeGene to the Bills. The Lions at 29. I thought the defense was a problem for the Lions. They brought in Carl, Carlton Davis, we just talked about from the Bucks. I think they can keep improving from that group. And Kool-Aid McKinstry is sitting there. I like Kool-Aid McKinstry's game at Alabama. He's been a great player for a long time. So the Lions go with the corner from Bama, Kool-Aid McKinstry. At 30 with the Ravens, you know, this is a team that, They've got to look at this, this and say, okay, hold on. Just playing great defense wasn't able to get there because we did play pretty great defense even against Patrick Mahomes. And I don't know if you're ever going to get, and I know this is crazy because they won the Super Bowl, but if you're looking at just the offensive firepower for the Chiefs, I don't think you're going to get a Chiefs team that is as pedestrian on offense in the next few years is what you had last year, okay? And, and they tried to hold them there. So for me, you've got to find a way to increase your ability to be explosive on the offensive side. And you've got to look at it with the style that Lamar plays. Lamar is an unbelievable talent, unbelievable talent. And I think the type of players that succeed with him are the ones that can go down the field and win 50-50 situations. And that's Keon Coleman from Florida State, the wide receiver. They've got to replace Odell Beckham. Keon Coleman is big, physical. He's athletic. He would be a great complement to Zay Flowers, who's a smaller, shiftier guy. And so now you can get that 50-50 guy where he's got a big body. He's athletic. And I think that fits Lamar Jackson. I, fit, I think that fits their style of offense. Run the ball, throw play action down the field. So I like Keon Coleman, 30 there to the Ravens. 
At 31, the Niners. So San Francisco, I thought, from kind of surprisingly, released uh, Arik Armstead. And then they he signed with Jacksonville. So in my mind, I think that that's a good spot for Jerzon Newton. That's a disruptive defensive line. I don't think they need a ton on the offensive side. Now, maybe you could claim like, hey, they got to figure out quarterback. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. They also were right there. I mean, that was that was a great game. They also need to know the rules of overtime, but that's a totally different podcast. Let's be honest. Jerzon Newton from Illinois is a disruptive interior defensive lineman that not many people know about because he played at Illinois. He didn't play in a ton of big games, but trust me, I covered this guy when he played against Penn State. He was virtually unblockable that day, and every time that he would pop up on the film, as I'm studying the offense for you know any of these teams or studying defenses for any of these teams in the Big Ten, he's one of those guys that always stood out on film. Jerzon Newton is a heck of a player, and I think his activity in the interior of the defensive line fits with San Francisco. Now 32, the Chiefs. Okay, I wanted to go Xavier Worthy here, but I'm like, you don't need Xavier Worthy if you just signed Hollywood Brown. So now Hollywood Brown is there, but I don't think they should be done on the outside. I think that you need to continue on that wide receiver group because that wide receiver group was bad. And there is a guy that I really loved during the course of the year that is still available right here, and that is Troy Franklin from Oregon. Troy Franklin, for a lot of the year, I thought was at least the second or third best receiver in all of college football. He's a smart player. He's strong. He's sure-handed. He runs really clean routes. And so if you give Patrick Mahomes a guy that can be that kind of an A number one type of threat, and then you give him the home run ability of a, of a Marquise Brown. Now you can kind of have like a Tyree kill style of player with a guy that you know that can win. Now you got Kelsey, you know, can win on the inside and you got a guy on the outside and Troy Franklin that you know you can win. And now all of a sudden, remember I talked about Kansas City being as pedestrian as they would be in a long time on offense this last year, even as Super Bowl champs. That's because they can do something like sign Hollywood Brown and select Troy Franklin here from Oregon. I really like that. He's a complete receiver, and, and I love what he could bring. So that that's the mock draft. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel, and you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.